Hey guys, it's Tori and Nikki and Nikki's mom. <laughs> and you're and watching Got Ghost. Ghost. Today we are in Paso Robles, California, staying at the Hotel El Paso de Robles in in the Jesse James suite. We are hoping to get into contact with Jesse James. Oh, and we brought my mom we're here. We've just arrived and we're about to check out the hotel. <laughs> the nicest hotel and let me tell you we've actually stayed in some nice hotels that the rooms have been really weird like it should be a five-star hotel and it's not usually but this is nice this is really nice in one of our last videos we actually did a whole segment about jesse james and we believe we were actually talking to him through the essence method my name's on the bed are you in the mine with us right now flashlight it's a yes. yes. And now we are here at the Jesse James suite where he actually was nursed back to health when he got a gunshot wound. There is factual basis for the legend of Frank and Jesse James being in Paso Robles, but throughout the years, the legend has been obscured. It is generally known, however, that the James boys did stay with their uncle Drury on his La Panza ranch through the winter of 1868 to 1869. The reason for their visit, probably being more than just visiting their uncle. It's common knowledge that Jesse was actually shot in one of his robberies and went to California to heal. But during their stay in California, it is also believed that the James brothers may have come back to California in search for the gravesite of their father, Reverend Robert James. He had died during the gold rush in 1850, possibly from cholera. The story is that Frank James traveled by train and stagecoach and arrived at their uncle's ranch before Jesse. Jesse arrived the summer of 1868 on a steamer called Santiago de Cuba bound for Panama. Then he got on a different steamer to San Francisco because he was apparently recovering from a bullet wound. Besides taking in his nephews, what was Drury James all about? In 1846, Drury enlisted in the Mexican War as a drummer boy and fought through the war under General Taylor. After the war was over, Drury went to California. He mined until he made enough money in California and decided to open up a cattle selling business. Apparently, when he first came to El Paso de Robles, he visited the Hot Springs Hotel. Drury ended up becoming a partner in Paso Robles and buying a percentage of the inn. Even though Jesse James and Frank were both known outlaws, their uncle still took them in to heal. Since Jesse and Frank found solace with their uncle Drury, I thought it was the perfect episode to bring in family ties and where we think spiritual gifts come from. My mom thinks that I got all of my spiritual gifts from her and they are passed down through your genes. I think that because I'm an empath and I can feel everything Nicole feels. Nicole's an empath also, so she takes in feelings and when she knows I'm upset, she calls me. She always has. She absolutely knows when I'm upset. Not everybody has this kind of gift. I think it was passed on through my grandmother on my dad's side. It's very overwhelming. If I go to a party, I can feel everybody's happiness. I can be on an airplane and feel everybody's anxiety. Sometimes it's a really good feeling and it lifts you up. And a lot of times it's a really bad feeling because it really brings you down and makes you sad and you can't help it. And it, it really hurts sometimes. There's nothing you can do about it. Do you feel like you got any of your spiritual gifts from someone in your family? You know, that's a really interesting question. I've never really thought about that. Definitely like the dreaming and stuff. I have those similar with my brother. I don't necessarily know if my mom or my dad has it because they've never expressed that to me before. And her brother is actually in one of our other videos and he has even seen like physical apparitions. So who yeah. knows if that's something that Tori might unlock. Yeah, so I definitely think that it does run in the family and that lots of people can have similar abilities. You feel it though. Yeah. I know you feel it because when I watch your videos, I can feel it through you. And she's got the ear things on. She's hearing it. While she's hearing it, I can feel you feeling it. Mm. It's so weird. It's like you guys are radiating this energy around you together. Wow. That's wow. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> My mom has a pretty crazy experience. And a lot of times when we go on these ghost hunts, sometimes I have to take Zequel because I get scared of what I'm going to dream about. And sometimes they have meaning. And I believe I also got that from my mother because she has had this insane experience that I'll just let her tell you. My sister had a four month old baby and I had a dream three nights in a row. My mom came to the door, bang, bang, bang. And I had a townhouse, so I'd run downstairs and she'd say, where's the baby? I'm like, I don't have a baby. She says, yes you do, where's the baby? Where's the baby? And then I had a Jeep Wrangler and I'd look at the Jeep 
and there's a baby and they're sweating in a car seat. So I take the baby out, take it upstairs, wash it up, little girl, and that would be the end of the dream. Next night, second night, bang, bang, bang. I ran downstairs, my mom was at the door. She said, where's the baby? And it didn't take me as long to figure out to look in the Jeep. Brought the baby out, again sweating, took the baby upstairs, washed her all up. That was the end of the dream. Third night, bang, bang, bang. Ran downstairs, my mom's like, where's the baby? Immediately, I looked at the Jeep. Brought the baby inside, washed her up. Seven days later, my sister was murdered and I had a four month old baby. So, I do believe sometimes you need to listen to your dreams, especially if they're repetitive. You know, if you've got some kind of gift and it's telling you something, maybe listen to it. You may not be able to help it, but it may be your future. Do you guys feel like you have any spiritual gifts? Let us know and let us know what your learning abilities are. Yeah, we'd love to know if you want to comment below. We also want to take a moment to just say thank you so much to Michael Little. And we're just thankful that you watched and you wanted to help. It's also our first ever donation on YouTube and you have no idea what the support means to us. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, let's get into the investigation. We have a pendulum here. Basically what it is, is it's a stone that reads your energy and helps answer questions through your guides. You want to hold your pendulum comfortably on the palm of your hand so that it can read your energy. And then you want to ask it to show you yes. Show me yes. Show me no. Are we going to speak to Jesse James tonight? That's a yes. That's a yes. Are we going to speak to something pretending to be Jesse James tonight? That's a no. That's a no. Show me yes. Show me no. Will we talk to somebody we know tonight? Yes. I just asked it, will there be other people here with us? Yes. There usually is more than one spirit. Are we going to speak with multiple spirits tonight? It's a yes. Will it be a good experience? No. Oh. Look how fast it's going. Look how fast it's going. I'm not doing that. Should we be worried about how tonight is going to go? Say yes. Is tonight's video going to surprise us? What is that? It's a circle. It's a circle? Wait, that wasn't a no? That wasn't no, a question. No, it's not yes or no. That's like a... It may or it may not. We're just gonna have to see. Should we start this investigation now? Show me bigger. That's a yes. That's a yes. We're gonna get started. All right, so we're setting out some traps. You know, I wish Fred was here. We got the cards and we got the whiskey and we're not actually drinking, but we're gonna set this out as a trap to see if we can get Jesse James to come and be like, give me some of that whiskey. I'm gonna put these out to see in case you know, someone wants to blow them or knock them over. I'm going to set up this REM pod now. One of our REM pods is out of commission because we don't know where the antenna is, but we do have a lot of cat balls, so we're gonna set these out around the rooms. These are just normal cat balls. We use these in a lot of our investigations. They're just set off when someone moves them. Since we're gonna have the lights off, I'm gonna put one in this other room because we'll see it. And also one in the hallway. There'll be one like right there. That was something. Okay. All right, so we have our EMF detector and I'm gonna just see if there's anything over there. I feel like I'm never really picking up anything on the EMF detector. It's so hard to get this to like pick anything up, but we're gonna keep looking. Something is definitely here with us. Trusty Dusty Scare Bear that my cat has tried to eat has made him scarier. <laughs> the Scare Bear has never gone off during an investigation. Oh shit, I'm scared. All you have to do is squeeze him. A minute ago, I wasn't really squeezing him, so I'm a little bit concerned. The scare bear has never gone off during an investigation. But we're gonna put him out and see if anything touches him. So he'll only go off if someone... So we have this bell. He's kind of cute, but we're gonna put him all the way in this other room. If something dings us, we're gonna hear it. 
Okay, so last time we thought we had communication with Jesse James inside one of the mines. He liked using these. So I'm gonna set up these just normal Scrabble tiles again so that he can move them if he wants to. Are we winning? There is some haunted history about this place. I think we're gonna tell you a little bit about it. Before we get into it, make sure to follow us on Instagram to see our new Polaroid from this week's video. I felt like there was somebody behind me when we just took that picture, like a shadow. Yes. I don't know what it is, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I told you. I gave me chills. I told you I felt like there was something behind me and they don't like that. Let's get into what people have reported in this hotel specifically. One thing that's widely reported here from the front desk is that they're, they receive calls from room 1007 and then when they answer it, there's no one on the line. Some people think that this is actually the spirit of the man trying to protect the hotel from burning down. In 1940, the Paso Robles Hot Springs Hotel actually completely burned down, except the firefighters were able to save the ballroom. The spirit that they still think roams here is named Emsley. He was the night guard that actually stopped the fire when the hotel was burning, called the fire department, and told everybody to leave. He actually was the only one who did not survive. He is said to protect this hotel. Unfortunately, after the fire, he actually died of shock from a heart attack, but everybody else lived. There's also supposedly a little girl ghost. Helen Sawyer's father was actually a general manager in the 1900s of this hotel. It's said that she is heard running through the hallways, playing and laughing, and you could hear footsteps. When they remodeled the historic ballroom, she was super active, is what they said. When the construction workers would open the doors in the morning, they would slam behind them scaring the construction workers. They would also find their tools moved all around. She is known to be most active in room 1211 and in the hallways. Which is interesting because where are the hallways? So we went and found the specific hallway that is haunted. The reason why this hallway is actually known to be the creepiest hallway is because this is where the little girl is known to mostly reside. She resides in room 1211, which is down the hall and through these halls of ways. Unfortunately, there are people staying in these rooms, so we can't do any of our investigation here. The piano in the ballroom lobby is also said to be haunted by Ignaz Paderewski. I am sure I am butchering that, but he was a composer who often stayed here. And one person has said that whenever they played his music, the lights actually flickered in tandem and in rhythm with the music. And the minute they stopped, the lights stopped flickering. Oh, I have found some of his music just on Spotify and I'm gonna play it and see if it kinda ignites anything. After the piano is played, it is said that you can often see two orbs floating throughout the ballroom. We're here. Welcome to the ballroom. When I first entered the ballroom, no one else was in here with me and I actually did see an orb of light pass up above. It was really, really quick and obviously you'll just have to take my word for it, but it was really cool to see and that is one of the things that is actually reported in the ballroom. It's giving me like a head high. Yeah, the energy is amazing in here. Really good. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. I yeah, fully that. expected to see security when I turned around. We are in the same building that they were in 200 years ago. We are going to use this new method that Nikki and I have kind of been trying out. It's kind of to test out her abilities again and I especially want her to do this with her mom here and having that energy, that family connection. She's putting on white noise and noise canceling headphones and basically she sits in the energy and feels things and as she feels them coming to her, she'll say them or write them down. We're in a beautiful ballroom. This is original. I'm sure you can feel at home here. I'm here, I'm here. Young girl running up, sh shaking me like, I'm here, I'm here. Did we just hear you in the kitchen? 
You don't have to be scared. I know you're not supposed to talk with strangers, but we're not really strangers. We know a lot about you. I can't tell you. Are you by yourself? Are there three entities in here? <laughs> Feels like something's touching my leg. This is Nikki's mom who's here with us. Is your mom here? The, there's an older woman just left. Did you go back in the kitchen? The little girl's like listening but shy, like curious about what you're saying. Who is the man who's with you? I'm two men outside walking up. Is that you turning on the flashlight? I thought like I am Frank was like, okay, it could just be my subconscious. And then it was like, you wanna talk or what? Frank, if you're here with us, could you make some sort of sound or maybe turn on our flashlight so that we know it's you? I brought him my brother. Jesse? Yeah, you know. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse James. You guys keep talking about him. If you guys are here. It's not like they're right here. It's like they're back there in the doorway. And the little girl is like, So, there's three of you here. Like, is that you using the flashlight? They're laughing. Jesse, do you remember speaking with us before? I just got a really cold breeze on my back. Are you behind me? Felt like someone just squeezed my arm like, you scared? We aren't scared of you, we actually just want to talk, but it seems like you want to play games. I'm having a pain here. Don't hurt Nikki. That's not funny to us. <laughs> like smirking. Made me laugh. Do you respect women? You do, don't you? Did you come here to tell us what we want to know? So what do we get out of it? I guess the only thing you get from telling us your side of the story. You don't own anything? I'm telling you right now, is that... You can't tell me there's not something. What do you want? What were you thinking right now, all of you? We want to know where the treasure is buried. I was thinking that if you tell us, you'll get another chance to be famous again. Do you want to be famous again? Okay, there's like a swaggering lock. I think we've interested you. Jesse or Frank, do you walk with a limp? You can walk up and sit with us if you'd like. Yeah. Did we interest you when we mentioned you could be famous again? No, the guys are talking to each other, not us. That's okay. We'll wait for a little bit. We have other people to talk to. Uh, I feel like something's touching my toes and I have flip-flops on. Yep, see, light went off. I told you something's touching my toes and it's not by nothing. The little toe. girl's under the table. You can come out from underneath the table. I'm dead body dragging across the table. The table's shaking, like my legs are shaking. It's okay to come out, I know you're it's scared. You're playing with my toes. Are you playing with our feet? My toes? What, did you scare something in there? No, it felt like a bug like crawled like like this like like on my ear and I'm like so what the fuck's scared. in this? Like a gnat or something? It scared me, but I don't know what's over there, but it's not talking to us. Okay, that's fine. Doesn't mean it's bad. I know, but it just it I felt like I was seeing a lot of things really clearly okay. and then whatever was here it was like a wall, like I can't see what's over there. Okay. Oh, I have chills. I'll tell you. Who is back there? That's someone else. Okay. They're leaving. They're leaving. Come closer. Where do you want us to come? You too. Lights far. going out, dimming out. What happens if I go over there? Oh, Stay like back there. Are you gonna look? <laughs> Hello? 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 Is anyone here? Um, Okay, we just heard something in the kitchen and we did go and check just really quick and there is no one back there. We're not supposed to be back there so we're not going to spend more time back there but there is no one in this building with us right now. 
So we are leaving the ballroom right now. I definitely love exploring this method with Nikki because I do think that it is getting more successful. I have this sense that she's starting to trust her instincts more and honestly, it's pairing up really well with the question and there's no way she's able to hear it with the noise canceling headphones. The change of tone and questioning and vibe in the room when the boys came in was very clear to me. Like I all of a sudden felt like I needed to kind of neg them and flirt and like see if they were willing to tell us what we want to know. The little girl playing with my toes wasn't so great. It creeped me out, but uh, every time, you know, I kept saying there's something playing with my toes, her flashlight would go off, and then she could feel something in there, they were messing with her. And it felt like it's funny when you use my <laughs> See, she's playing with us some more. Yeah, it just lined up. It was really bizarre to me, and then we kept hearing noises over there in the kitchen, and no one was in there. It's closed, so. It was just kind of a weird experience for me. Another ghostly experience that people have had is the ghost of Cecilia Blackburn. She is said to haunt the steakhouse and the wine cellar. She likes to go into the wine cellar and lock people in there, and also has been known to pull on people's hair and play with the employees' ponytails. She is the wife of one of the former owners, William Blackburn. Despite all of the hauntings and the sketchy history of the hotel with the outlaws staying here and the other famous people staying here, people don't care. They still come here, it's a beautiful place, and they embrace it. We chose this room specifically because our main focus tonight was contacting Jesse James so that we could find his hidden treasure if he wants to tell us. You should tell us. Should we go dark? Yes! All right. Or going dark. I'm also locking us in. There's so many lights. Uh, dear God or positive energy of the earth, please look over us tonight, make us safe, and make everything go well. And let's have a good experience. Amen. 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 We're gonna go with our first feeling, which was suggested by Nikki's mom, and she thinks that we should ask some questions and just see what kind of energies are in the room, and maybe possibly which one of our devices. <gasps> we just saw a legit flash of light. Like, you know when someone has a text notification that flashes? That is the same place where we heard the gong. Okay, my phone is off. We just checked the phones. The phones are in fact off, and it was not the phone. There's nothing over there. I don't know. Is there anything with us we'd like to communicate? <laughs> I'm farted. Okay, that was that weird. Was we are having some really weird experiences right now. Like, we've never seen a flash of lightning inside of a room on a table. We've never heard a <laughs> ghost fart. No disrespect here. We just don't you know what fart. that sound was. It's chillin'. We are here. If you would like to communicate with us, you have the use of all of our devices. I just want to put this out there. We're only talking to positive spirits. With that being said, let's continue. We have our flashlight over there. And our scare bear. And if that goes off, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything here that wants to communicate that is a positive spirit, can you please give us a sign? Is there any children here? That might want to talk. They were so active like a minute ago. Our, our devices were going off and now we're here in the quiet ready to listen and it definitely feels like something wants to come through. We're here to hear your story. We're not here to like, I know we've been joking around a lot and stuff, but because we're just trying to, trying to have fun with it and sometimes talking to spirits can be scary because it's not like that well known in our current world. Um, but we, we do want to communicate with you. I mean, chills. We do want to communicate with you. We do want to talk to you. And if there's someone here that wants to talk with us, we would love to talk to you. My worry is, is that there was something negative in here. And when we said we weren't communicating with it, Left. Yeah. It does take a lot of energy to use our devices and we are aware of that. Really wish I knew what made that flash. I'm shocked. I don't I don't even know what to think about that. I, I really wish we recorded it. Yeah, I mean I really <laughs> don't even know what it could have been. 
We're leaving a lot of spaces for silence. So remember, if you guys hear anything or see anything that we didn't, please make sure to comment below and leave the timestamps so that we can help further investigate maybe what you saw or heard. This place just feels like a place of healing. There is a lot of water, which is also very peaceful and helps things energetically move. It also feels like there's some form of like feng shui and there's koi ponds and it feels like a happy place, like generally. There are some places that we visit, it might look happy on the outside, but as soon as you walk in, you're like, there's something dark here. I didn't feel that. Mm -hmm. I don't feel a negative energy here. My mom just went in the Aztec method and said, hello, I, and we haven't heard anything else yet. Is there someone here that wants to communicate with us? Me? Bay? Who is? It's fine. It doesn't like it. It doesn't like the run pot? What don't you like? Enrique. Is Enrique the one touching that? Who is Enrique? Can you go a little bit closer to the red pot, Enrique? Bad. Oh. Oh. Enrique is oh. bad. We're not speaking with anything. Ban on. We are not speaking with any negative spirits. Any negative spirits must leave now. You are not welcome here. We are not speaking to you. We will take away your form of communication. Gone. Reeking out. Who? Who is using the REM pod? Can you please step away from the REM pod so that we can communicate with you? We understand that you're here. I can see a guy with big rim glasses on. And he's got a mustache. Get out. Who are you? Who are you? Are you telling us to get out? Free. Do you want us to be free? Are you afraid that there's a fire? People everywhere. I, I want you. Are we speaking with C Cecilia? Guys. Guys, a few guys. I have to reset the REM pod. Making me mad. <gasps> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we're sorry. I didn't mean to make you mad, it's just we, we couldn't... We could have someone sat on the bed. Tonight! Can you tell us who we are speaking with? Who are you? It sounded like a growl, like... There's a lot of tea. Please! Get out! Get out of where? Never! It's over! You! He's coming. Who's He's coming. coming. Who's coming? Out. I think we should talk. I think it's safe for her to get out. This is not Get. Out. That is what it's saying. It doesn't okay. sound like anything nice. Yeah, I wasn't sure if the reason why I left her in so long, normally I wouldn't, is because there is the spirit of the man who watches over the place who's constantly trying to warn people that there's a fire and that they need to get out. Something mean going, get out, and then something, get out, please. Mm. There's like two different people. I think it just made me wonder if it was him, but now, sense. now that I'm finding out that it's felt more negative, I think it was probably somebody warning us to get out. I, I, I personally feel a heavy pain. I feel like, like that. I don't know why. Just, I, it's not a painful feeling, but like just a, a heavy sigh kind of feeling. Like they can't decide whether they want to talk to us or whether they can talk to us or not talk to us. Like, I can't breathe real deep. Doesn't your chest get really tight? Yeah, my attack? attack. Mm -hmm. And it feels, it feels like, you know, take a deep breath. Like, I want to take shallow, heavy breaths. Like, an elephant sitting on you. We're going to go to the other room. We're going to move some of our equipment over there. I'm having a pain right here. I don't know what I mean. I got a sharp pain right under my jaw. 
I don't feel like I did. Like it was kind of hard to breathe. Like something was sitting on my chest. I don't feel like pressed over. Yeah. There. Yeah. I feel like it's easier to sit up straight in here. Yes. Our flashlight just turned on while we were talking about personal life matter. So there's obviously something here that wants to communicate. So is it Frank? <gasps> That's a yes. Yes. Okay. Your name is Frank. Can you please turn off the flashlight when you're ready for the next question? Frank, is Jesse here with you? Do you ever feel like Jesse gets all of the attention? Is this Frank James, Jesse James' brother? It's actually 2022, the year 2022, and you and your brother's treasure has still not been found. Did Jesse James hide the treasure without you? Is the treasure still in California? Are you still here with us? Yes. Do you want the treasure to stay hidden? want the treasure to stay hidden. That makes sense. Yeah. They don't, why would they tell you they don't know you? Yeah, it's true. Oh, okay, came back home. He said, said yes. yes. Yeah, they said I don't know you. I am chills also. I'm chills. Frank, is it possible for you to go get your brother? Are you able to? Like, if you wanted to, could you go get him? We've noticed We've noticed that some spirits are able to bring others. Yes, he said he could give him if he wanted to. So we've had this pretty confirmed now over a few videos. And I mean, we can't say anything scientifically. So this is all just theory. But we've had multiple spirits and entities tell us that in the afterlife, they can go get other spirits and bring them back to communicate. That's so crazy. It's amazing that we can even figure that out. Actually, the first time we even tested this theory was when we thought we might possibly be talking with Jesse James himself. I wonder why their spirits maybe reside in two different places. Frank, did, did Jesse tell you that we communicated with him near the Calico Caves? That is so cool! <laughs> At the time, Frank, I have to explain to you, we didn't know that we were talking to your brother, Jesse. He had just introduced himself as Mr. James. We didn't have enough prior knowledge about you guys to ask the right questions that maybe we should have been asking him. And I'm sorry for that. Are you willing to let us get to know you? Do you think we just care about the treasure? Because we don't. Would it be cool to find the lost treasure for sure? Would it help fund our YouTube channel? 100%. But, yes, <laughs> yeah, he's like, hell yeah, I'm like, yeah, it would. Because you don't understand how much money is worth now. You thought it was worth a lot then. It has only gone up in value, let me tell you. It's exciting, totally. But at the same time, like, we're not doing these videos to find lost treasure. It would be cool, but I feel like the real treasure is kind of not only telling people stories that never got to be told, but also figuring out like, where are you? What are you doing in the afterlife? Like, what is it like? Like, we're finding out little things at a time, of course. Yeah. But it's so cool that we found out things like, you can go talk to Jesse. That's so cool. We have so many questions for you. You have no idea how amazing it is that you're here right now. Did you come to California to see your family? Did you come to California because you're running from the law? Did you just come on to vacation? Did you never come to California? Frank, if you're still with us, can you turn the flash? Oh, no, he's still here. Okay. I noticed once you guys started mentioning uh, Jesse more and more and when you talked about the treasure the responses took longer and longer. I agree. I feel like and 
and I was honestly kind of feeling this earlier. I feel like a lot of people talk about Jesse and it's always like Jesse and Frank James. It's like he's always second and I feel like that would have to get really annoying. Oh yeah. There's a backstory to that though. Further research showed that the reason that Jesse James is more famous than Frank James is simply because his death was more random and violent. Did you enjoy the rush of bank robberies? Frank, did you do it for your family? Did you just do it for the money? Did you do it for the fame? Jesse James died. Um, two members, they weren't members of his gang, but they were in the outer circle, uh, broke into his house in the morning and shot him while he was straightening a picture on the wall. All we know about your life is the treasure and that legacy that you've left behind. And like you said, you did that for fame. So you're famous now. You are so famous. So you got what you wanted. Do you want to try to communicate with us through a different method? Where you can use words? Yes. We are now using the Estes method. What is the Estes method? It is a method using a radio frequency and the spirits can use the radio changes to express themselves through different words and stuff that they hear on the radio, sometimes songs even. Nikki is going under now and we're going to ask questions. She can't hear us, she has soundproof headphones on. Well, hello there. Hi. Felt like someone touched me on the top of the head. Are we speaking with Frank James? You got it. It's buried. Are you willing to tell us about the treasure? Who, me? Yes. Frank James. Yeah. Are there multiple entities here? Somewhere east of here. Are you going to tell us more about your treasure? It is revealed. There's more sounds coming. I did. Bathroom. You did tell us a little bit about your treasure? Can you tell us? The treasure. Is it still buried? Now, are we speaking with Jesse and Frank both? There is no. I missed that last word. Did Enough! You, are you sick of us asking about the treasure? Did you stay here? Yeah, lowered it in water. Are you giving us little hints about the treasure? Is it in the mountains? In the water? Weapon? Found. Frank, are you still here communicating with us? Tree. Are you trying to tell us that something was lowered down by the into the water by a tree? The what? He left. Is Frank James still here with us communicating? No. Who are we speaking with? It's by the tree. Go on. Do you want us to go into the other room? Okay, so this is my vlog camera. We're setting it up in the room on the REM pod that's going off because we can't see it in there. So, we're going back into the Estes method and Tori's going to go under because we weren't really getting anything super clear. Who is here with us right now? I 
back. Is this How are you doing over there? We're doing good, right? Is this Frank? Are you back? You said you're back. Are you someone we spoke to previously? What city is the water, the running water at, that you put something in it? Water. What did you put in the water? I tried. We're here. Do you want us to come in the other room? Do you know I'm there? Yes, here. we can We can hear you touching the REM pod in the other room. I know it's random. Are we going? Into the other room? Please, Nikki? Do you feel like there's something good or something bad in the other room? Something bad. You know? Unknown. Can you go to the other room? Where do you go to the other room? Inside oh, hey. that. So you go to the other room. Oh, hey. Alright, to the other room. Oh. And that's 1037. So. <laughs> Did you get scared? That means I'm touching it right now. Oh, shh. That means I'm touching it right now. My whole camera's. Check the vlog camera. I started the recording and it's off, guys. off again. There's nothing else on here, so the footage shouldn't have run out that fast. Okay, we're about to try something that you guys have never seen before. We're gonna split up, which sounds like a really bad idea. I'm scared. So Tori is gonna go in the bathroom with the light off in the REM pod by herself. Me and my mom are going to be in the main room playing the Ask Us Method out loud, asking questions, and uh, filming on the vlog camera. Here we go. Here we go. Lights out. us find you and your brother's treasure. I don't want to tell you. Maybe. I said maybe. Maybe. I know that you want something Stop that asking. can bring you more fame by finding it. Can you draw us a map on where to go? This is like light and this is super dark over here like this. We're listening. Is there any I remember you. You and Jesse's treasure. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Is there any treasure? Has it all been spent? What state is the treasure in? The boys are back. What town is the treasure in? Um, they want to show us something? It said woods. Um, which woods? Is it buried? A tree. By a tree. It like looks yeah. like this. I like a pine tree. Is there water near the tree? Uh, and yeah. the sun. Is it near a river? And there's a shadow of the tree here. Is it in Colorado? Like that. Is it in the Oklahoma's panhandle? Do you want us to find the treasure? I'm seeing a lot of light purple over here. People have been looking for years for this treasure. Can you tell us something that they don't know? 
Can you give us a clue to find the treasure? Oh my blue. What are you waiting for? Is there any landmarks by where the treasure is hidden? I can't just tell you what you want to know. There's like a cabin over here with a window. Did you put a signature? Or an arrowhead or anything? Yeah, like right there. It's more than that. I'm seeing like an opening and then like a big dark something. It's giving me like... Where do we need to start looking? Cave vibes. Oh, like there's like a cave. Is all of the treasure hidden in one spot? I can't believe you're saying this. I can't believe you're saying this. Find it. Don't say another word. What, what do you want out of it? Whatever is true. Slash noble. All right, then you have to tell us where to go. Where do we go? Write it down, it said. Oh, I said write it down, Tori. Tori, yeah, I heard that too. I hope Tori's writing it down. You ready to get down? The big wheel keeps turning. Is there anything else you need to tell us on the spear box about the treasure? us go on a treasure hunt yeah. to find Jesse James lost treasure. If you do, make sure to let us know in the comment section this below. This was literally crazy. We she drew a map. <laughs> and it literally said, write it down, Tori. Oh my god, it said that? And I've never heard Tori before I've that. I've never heard that, ever. It said plain as day. Plain as day. Wow. Even actually, she was the one who said it. said, she was like, it said, write it down. We both heard it. And she was like, Tori. That's just said, Tori. I was like, yeah, it did. Holy crap.